Okay guys, so this is the last part of the sword modeling series and in this episode we're not actually going to be doing a tutorial, we're going to be doing a breakdown um, and the reason we're going to be doing a breakdown is because um, lighting and texturing something is so subjective, uh, it's very hard to do a tutorial on and the reason it's so subjective is because you know playing with the settings will really determine how your objects will look using different textures will determine how your objects will look how many lights you have what colors and the render settings in general just everything can make a massive difference so instead of just telling you to use this setting use that setting put this light at this coordinate this light over here and you will get this result I don't think that is a, a confident um, way of actually teaching someone um, how to light and render. Um, what I will do um, alternatively is give you this file um, so you can download it and then you can just you know go into the actual um, setup and just basically have a look at what I did and what material settings that I used. Um, and kind of figuring out why I use specular, um, which I don't particularly like, but in this case it really did save the day. Um, why I used a bump map and why I used a normal map, and you know, just kind of just surgically digress it and kind of look at what happened. Um, I feel that that's a much stronger way of learning rather than me just telling you what to do. Um, so one of the things that I would like from you guys who follow along with this series would be to, um, if you've come this far, you've obviously watched the other parts of this. Um, so it would be awesome if you could, you know, light and text this yourselves and then just send me a PM of your results. And then I will make a video showing everyone on the channel um, your results, you know, how you went about lighting it. Um, and that would be really, really cool. Um, so let's have a look at the final result, which is here. Um, this actually took 41 minutes and 42 seconds, which is quite a long time, but not so much because I was doing other things. So it doesn't really take much time um, because I was doing other things. So it's, it's good. Um, so if we look at this, um, originally these parts up here, um, except for the handle of course, was all chrome as well. It was kind of this like dirty chrome and it looked really nice. However, I felt it just took too much away from the blade um, and yeah so I changed the color of these and I changed the reflective amount so the main highlight here or the main focus would be the blade now this isn't perfect and uh, there's a lot more things I could do to this to make it look a lot better um, but I think overall it, it turned out really well and um, we've got a really nice reflective floor we've got some really nice highlights at the front here on the blade and we've got some differentia, um, you know, colours and type of materials up here. Because I didn't really, you know, I've never held a sword before. And well, actually, I lie, I've, I've held, um, what was it, I, I can't remember what they're called. They're them little swords that they, they used to have on um, end of guns. I can't I think, of, it begins with a B or something, it's like a barang or something. Uh, something daft like that. But anyways, um, so, I, you know, I don't have a sword laying around. I went to Google, there was a lot of anime swords and stuff like that. I couldn't really find um, a real sword. Um, so I just kind of went with my instinct and this is kind of the results that I came up with. And I don't know, I uh, might be biased because it's my own work, but I think it turned out relatively nice. Uh, there's a lot more I could do to this. If I had to do it again, I probably wouldn't take as long. Um, but, you know, the results would maybe be better. Um, maybe the textures would be a bit lighter and stuff like that. But that being said, let's jump into the scene and we can have a look. Um, so the scene is really important, especially when working with, with reflective materials. As you can see in this scene, I don't have a sky object. I don't have any HDRIs, which generally work really well with um, chrome materials. Anything really reflective, um, HDRIs work really well. However, I opted for a different approach, and that would be to have reflective um, surfaces in the scene to, to basically place the highlights where I want them to be. Um, and I just added a, a luminance material to a plane. 
um, and it's still editable you can change this around any shape you want um, and basically this is hovered over the blade and it's basically adding a reflection to this blade at the front and then of course it kind of dies off now you might think well this is actually covering the entire blade so why isn't it, it reflecting um, everything um, you know why, why isn't the reflection across the entire blade um, it, it's the way reflections work and the way we have our material set up here we have of course some Fresnel in here so the further it goes away from the camera and um, the left reflection we will have and that's really adamant here so the camera is facing this way so the further it goes off in this direction and the opposite way um, which is basically the other side of the blade the less reflective it gets so we're kind of just getting this really nice highlight here which is really cool and it works out really well um, the top end here uh, of where the handle is it was really dark so what I had to do is I had to go in and add in another light which is just here it's maybe hard to see but it's just here this very very faint light um, and this is just to give us a little bit of um, light on the handle if I turn it off you can see the differences are quite um, noticeable um, and then we have two main lights each side both have different colors cool and warm and that just kind of lights the entire scene which is pretty nice they're off to the distance so these big highlights on the floor don't actually get picked up in the camera because then it would just ruin the entire look and um, as you can see the reflection in the middle here is very faint uh, and it's not blown out so it looks pretty good we also have um, just a normal reflective um, kind of floor here I did have an alternative floor which was um, this one which is just a wooden floor but I didn't like the um, the look of that um, so I, I opted to go for this kind of tiled floor instead which turned out to be a lot better because it really complemented the colors of the scene as well instead of having like this brown color and then you know this big chrome um, area so I just figured it, it just looked better in my opinion again you know rendering and stuff is, is really subjective because you guys might not like the, the final look of it um, which is fine you know it, it, you're entitled to your own opinion and you probably want to do something different, different colours, maybe not as reflective, maybe even more reflective, maybe like super, super reflective, like mirror reflective. And that would be really cool, you know, you don't have to do what I'm doing just because it's a tutorial. Um, definitely take away from it your own thoughts and what you want to do with it. Um, the first part of these tutorials were kind of guides, you know, this is how you model a sword. Okay, you don't know how to model a sword, well now you do. So now you've modelled it and you've added a few spikes to it, you've added a few different touches, and you've added maybe two blades instead of one, and you've done all these kind of crazy stuff. So now that that's yours, that's your design, you've, you've created that from scratch. Even though you've been following a tutorial, you've completely changed the direction of the final outcome. So, and that's really important um, when following tutorials, um, at least I think it is. Um, so that is pretty much, you know, um, how I lit this. And again, I will supply this in the description so you can download um, with all the materials and textures as well. So one of the things, last things I want to talk about is um, what makes a good texture. So I'm going to make a new document and I'm going to make uh, two spheres. Let's do two spheres here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two materials, number one and number two. That's going to be one and that's going to be two. These both are going to be dropped to, into a connect just so I can um, put this into a subdivision so they're both subdivided at the same time. And then I'm going to grab a light. Now this isn't a tutorial, um, it's just kind of a demonstration more than anything uh, that what makes a good uh, material because I think it's important that you understand this so um, let me render this out and you can see this is what we have two lovely looking materials so let's make these materials and you're probably gonna want the thing that I use and it's called X normals 
X normal. So if you go to Google and type this in, you can download it. It comes in its own interface or it comes attached to um, Photoshop, which is really nice. I really like to use it inside Photoshop. Um, and this is pretty much what you do. So this is a texture that we used on the handle of our sword. So what I've done is I've basically just duplicated it and made it a grayscale. Okay, so I'm going to save this out um, as the red color because we want the color to be there. So I'm going to save this out on the desktop as one. And I'm going to um, put it as, uh, just do a JPEG. I've got so many textures, I really need to clean my desktop. But um, I'm going to turn this back on and I'm going to go to filter X normal and I'm going to use height to normals. And I'm going to leave everything as default and hit OK. I'm going to go File, Save As, and name this as 2 JPEG. And then I'm going to use Control, Alt, and Z to undo that. I'm going to go to Filter, um, X Normals, and I'm going to use an occlusion. And I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go File, Save As, Free, and put this on the desktop. Control Alt Z to undo that. Filter, normal, and one more, which is going to be a cavity map. And then we're going to go file, save as, and put that as four. And put this on the desktop. Then Control Alt Z, just so we're back to our original. So they're the maps that I use for, for the sword, um, for every single texture that I had, which the textures aren't anything fantastic, by the way. Let me just go to my desktop and I'll show you. Um, for the handle, I used this red leather. Um, for the the handle um, basher at the top and the handle which connects to the um, sword, um, I use this gold material. And for the sword, I use the mixture of the gold material and this metal texture, which will open up in Photoshop. And that's pretty much it. They're the only ones that I used. Um, if I do go into my textures here, and you can see this is pretty much what it was. It's nothing fantastic at all. That's pretty much it. Um, I could have spent so much more time on this to make them look better. I could have had scratches. I could have had decay. I could have had rust. I could have done all that if I wanted to. But I just didn't want to just because it just takes so long. Uh, but from this, you can see the results that we got were pretty good. Um, so if you do spend more time on it, which I suggest you do, and then he's going to get something that looks really good. So as you can see here we have a diffuse, we have a normal, and we have a cavity map as well. So basically what I'm trying to say is, um, you just watch the differences. So on one, we're just going to add the color because that's what people would normally do. So one, that's the color, done. On two, however, we're going to add the color we're going to add the diffuse which is technically the um, occlusion map I'm going to set it to multiply and then in the bump we're going to add the cavity map and I'm going to reduce this down to about five and then the normals which is probably the most important because it gives the most detail um, you can see here if we up this I like to up it by about 50 um, you can see now, if we render these out, the differences in both of these materials are like light and day. It's massive. If you take something in real life, like leather, um, it's not a flat object, depending on, of course, quality of leather. It's not smooth like this. It does have texture, and you can see the differences between these two are quite big um, and which one looks more realistic in my opinion this one here with the extra detail looks more realistic and I think most people would um, say that that looks more realistic this looks really really flat and it kind of feels fake because these look like they're supposed to have detail but the detail is not there um, and you can see from the um, specular as well the specular is actually being broken up here um, and on here it's just it's just flat it looks plastic um, and that's not what we want and um, so even if we go in here and we add some reflectiveness let's just say 26% on both of these so reflectiveness 26% and give them a render out you can see you know the differences are quite big again um, 
obviously if we go into the light and turn on these we might be able to see a little bit better so you can see you know they look a lot different of course this one looks really really sharp and pointy this one doesn't look sharp and pointy and that's because the material itself is breaking up the reflectiveness um, and you know that's good because in real life if this was leather it wouldn't reflect a perfect reflection just because the material itself wouldn't let it um, so that is the importance of um, having the correct materials you know that's like 90% of the battle have the correct materials and then add the lighting to make it look fantastic I mean this looks pretty good you know as is you can go even further than this by adding in I don't know physical sky some something crazy um, and you can see the differences here uh, are just you know really really cool um, but that is pretty much it for you know this tutorial series it's my first tutorial series so uh, probably the future ones will be improved more organized more than anything so if you've got any suggestions that would be really awesome if you could leave them in the comments um, and I'm just happy that you guys um, enjoyed this series if you did um, so because what I've done is I've recorded all of them and then I'm going to release them um, so hopefully you did, you did enjoy it that would uh, be a bonus I suppose um, and don't forget to share your results if you do follow the series I know um, one person actually sent me um, an image of um, a logo he created following the tips and tricks in the Batman logo one and it was really nice to see that someone would send their work in so I can see it it just makes me feel really nice that um, someone has actually learned something from my um, from my tutorials and it, do, it just really makes me feel happy um, so guys thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I will catch you in the next episode peace